Mr. Rosenblum. Chairman Young, Ranking Member Merkley, Senator Shaheen, I'm honored to be here today as the nominee for U.S. Ambassador to the Republic of Uzbekistan. Um, I'd like to introduce a few members of my family who've joined me here today. My, my wife, Sharon, my son, Jonah, and my daughter, Liana, um, and my sister, Miriam, who's come down from Boston to, to be with us today. Uh, they keep me grounded, and I'm grateful for that. They've already uh, taken to calling me Ambassadad. Uh, as, a, as an example of that, although I reminded them that they can't call me that until I'm confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Uh, the life journey that led to my sitting at this table started in Middleburg Heights, Ohio, where I had the good fortune to be the son of Lewis and Evelyn Rosenblum. My mother was an educator who passed on to me her love of learning and fascination with history. My father worked at NASA for over 30 years developing rocket fuels that took the first Americans into space, and later solar cell technology for use on Earth. My dad was also a human rights activist who in the early 1960s helped organize the grassroots movement that provided moral and material support to Jews and other oppressed minorities living under Soviet communism. His advocacy efforts eventually led to passage of the Jackson-Vanik Amendment and mass emigration of Soviet Jews to Israel and the United States. I was deeply inspired by my father's civic activism and motivated to learn more about that faraway place that occupied so much of his attention. No doubt this influenced my decision to study Russian, history, language, and literature, and later to pursue a master's in Soviet studies. I also consider myself extremely fortunate to have spent four years here in the United States Senate in the 1980s learning from one of the most brilliant and hardworking public servants I have ever known, Senator Carl Levin of Michigan. During more than two decades at the State Department, I have relished opportunities to collaborate with Congress to further our foreign policy goals. And if confirmed, I look forward to working together with the members of this committee to promote U.S. interests and values in our relationship with Uzbekistan. What are those interests? Why does the United States care? We care because what happens in Uzbekistan directly affects the safety and security of American citizens. We have seen what can happen around the world when we disengage and ignore the root causes of instability. A stable and secure Uzbekistan is very much in American interest. We also have a sound, long-standing bipartisan policy of supporting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the independent states that emerged from the collapse of the Soviet empire. Uzbeks appreciate America's steadfast support for their sovereignty since 1991 when we were the very first country to recognize their independence. A fully sovereign Uzbekistan, free to align itself internationally as it sees fit, is very much in American interest. Uzbekistan currently is going through an exciting phase in its history as an independent nation. Over the past two years, President Mirziyoyev has launched a series of sweeping economic and political reforms aimed at modernizing Uzbekistan's economy, improving its citizens' quality of life, and making its government more accountable. More than 40 activists and journalists have been released from prison. Restrictions on civil society and the media are being loosened. Incidents of forced labor in the annual cotton harvest has been reduced. Child labor, virtually eliminated, and important first steps have been made to expand religious freedom. President Mirziyoyev has also fundamentally reoriented Uzbekistan's foreign policy by vastly improving relations with his Central Asian neighbors and actively supporting regional cooperation. Uzbekistan has also begun to play a prominent role in the search for peace and reconciliation in neighboring Afghanistan. If confirmed by the Senate, my number one priority will be to ensure the safety and security of my embassy team, as well as any and all American citizens in Uzbekistan. Beyond that, I will make it my priority to, number one, deepen our partnership with Uzbekistan in pursuit of shared regional security goals and achieve a new level of cooperation to counter terrorism and other transnational threats. Two, support the ambitious reforms the government of Uzbekistan has initiated Three, help U.S. companies take full advantage of opportunities to sell American products and to make investments as policy reforms make it easier to do business in Uzbekistan. 
Four, continue our focus on further improvements in the protection of basic rights and freedoms. And five, expand educational, business, science, and cultural exchanges between Uzbeks and Americans in order to establish a solid foundation for a long-term partnership. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, if I am confirmed, I pledge to work closely with you to support America's growing strategic partnership with Uzbekistan. I'm grateful for this extraordinary opportunity to serve my country, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Mr. Rosenblum. You talked about some of the changes that have been happening in Uzbekistan that are very welcome. One of the I don't want to say the only reason, but one of the reasons that we have um, worked very closely with the Uzbek government has been because of our efforts in Afghanistan, and Uzbekistan has been, um, has been very cooperative in those efforts. As we see um, the continued evolution of the conflict in Afghanistan, are you concerned about any spillover into Uzbekistan and what might happen as the result of changes in that conflict? Senator, thanks. Uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, there is a potential for spillover in the conflict, and the government of Uzbekistan is very aware of that. And for that reason, they have prioritized playing a constructive role in the reconciliation and peace efforts in Afghanistan. Uh, just in the past few months, we've seen a kind of reinvigorated effort by the government in Uzbekistan to, to play that role. They hosted an international conference on peace in Afghanistan in March. They have invited members of the Afghan government and, and the Taliban as well to talks in Tashkent. Uh, and we've been encouraging this. Uh, they have a strong stake, a strong interest in the, in the settlement. Um, they share a border, of course. And uh, we think that they can play a very constructive role. Um, and if I'm confirmed, that will be one of the main priorities of engagement with Uzbekistan, both its role with respect to um, Afghanistan, but also the broader neighborhood um, and to, to become a source of, of stability and peace in the neighborhood. Um, that's very encouraging. And what's happening there, again, is very encouraging. And I think um, that their engagement, both in Afghanistan and the region, offers a real opportunity for, as we look at coming to a pivotal time in Afghanistan. So I look forward to working with you in that effort. Uh, I wanted to start with Mr. Rosenblum. And Mr. Rosenblum, uh, what role can Uzbekistan play in mediating or supporting talks between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban? Senator, thank you for that question. Uh, it's it's an, a very important role that Uzbekistan can play. And uh, since President Mirziyoyev uh, became president, they've increasingly played a role in regional security, improving relations with their immediate neighbors, one of which is, of course, Afghanistan. Uh, and judging by some of their initiatives over the past few months, I think Uzbekistan is trying to promote peace and reconciliation in a very active way. It's clearly in their interest to have a stable neighbor. Um, I think you, you recall that there was a high-level international conference held in Tashkent in March, hosted by the government of Uzbekistan on Afghanistan. Um, Uzbekistan's also been making efforts to boost trade with its neighbors. They've signed a number of trade agreements just in the past few months with Afghanistan. Uh, Uzbekistan supplies a lot of electricity to Afghanistan. Much of Kabul is powered by electricity coming down from Uzbekistan. And um, in, all, in all fields, we're seeing a very active effort on their part. So uh, this is something that we've encouraged. It's something that we support. We want to make sure that their efforts are well coordinated with broader international efforts at reconciliation in Afghanistan. Uh, but uh, as, as I said before, no one has more of a stake in stability and peace in Afghanistan than its neighbors, and including Uzbekistan. Uh, th thank you. And you mentioned the power provided to Afghanistan. Can you can you describe the the makeup of Uzbekistan's uh, electric power and how that might potentially change over the years to come? So Uzbekistan's power um, system, Senator, is primarily powered with uh, oil and gas, and they uh, some of which they produce themselves and some of which they bring in from neighboring countries. 
they do export electricity from that power generation to neighboring countries, including Afghanistan, as I mentioned. Uh, we also know that the Uzbek government is very interested in developing renewable power, and we've worked through some projects under USAID to give them the technical capacity they need to develop that, especially solar and possibly wind. So uh, this is an increasing move on the part of the government to diversify its energy generation. Uh, and uh, it's something that we're, we're working on together with them through, uh, through technical assistance. Uh, th thank you very much. Mr. Rosenblum, um, I, I found your story about your father uh, and um, his work to fight anti-Semitism, powerful, compelling and uh, something that I hope uh, reaches a much broader audience. In the U.S. and abroad, uh, we have dis seen a disturbing increase in anti-Semitic hate crimes and, and violence. And sadly, we've seen it in my home state of Indiana very recently. These anti-Semitic acts, uh, they're contrary to our values, uh, contrary to what America's all about. So if confirmed, I'd just like to have each of your commitments from each one of you uh, in your respective positions that you'll do all you can to name, shame, and oppose anti-Semitic statements and actions. <coughs> Mr. Tom. Senator Young, you have my commitment. Y yes, sir. You have my commitment. Thank you, Ambassador. You have my commitment, sir. Okay. I do so pledge, Senator. Yeah. I do as well, sir. Thank you all. <laughs>